now that we have a unified scale and a skeleton that works, we need to create a new HDA that unifies the geometry creation using the sweep node. And in here, we'll need to create a few attributes that we will need later in our setup. To begin with, we need a UV attribute. And if you go into the sweep node here and go to the tab UV and attributes, you can compute the UV here. And you can see that we have a UV if you just show the textures. And we have this one on as well. You can see that we have UV attributes. And you can also press the number five on the keyboard and you can see that uh, the UV uh, islands in here. Back to perspective by pressing one. So this is uh, needed later. If we press on this button here, we can see the UV seams. So this is where the UVs um, are split uh, to create these unfolded geometries for the UV window. The problem with this is when, whenever we're going to add noise and textures later, we will have a seam in here. So this is a, a seam that we will see the difference between this side and this side. And this is a problem that we will run into later if we only use the UV attribute. That's why in addition to the UV attribute, we will add another one called uh, a rest attribute or pref and this attribute stores the three-dimensional position data of each point for the geometry which will help avoid having any seams in the geometry in order to do that we need to put the uh, the tubes each of the tubes into a rest position so if you imagine so each of these tubes now they are deformed and we need to kind of get them back to a rest state of just pointing up without any noise and the easy way to do that is by using the curve u attribute along with the point point number of each of the points on the lines. So let's start by just creating a, a resample node here and adding it above the sweep. And let's just uh, remove the, the maximum segment length and let's just compute the curve u in here. And now let's let's drag a new line in here and let's add a point vop. Let's call this set to rest display it and let's dive inside and in here what we need to do is first of all let's let's create a float to vector node as we will create the position manually for each of the axes so let's connect this one to the position in here so let's uh, bring in the so if we bind in the curvy attribute curvy and connect this to the Y input, which is in the one in the middle in the three vectors. As you can see, we already have a line in the middle. The problem with this right now is all of the lines are in the same position and they are all the same length, which is not correct. So first let's just shift them to the side uh, by just adding the primitive number into the X axis in here. And you can see that by just rotating, you can see them shifted to the side so they're not on top of each other. Now we need to get the correct length for each of the lines that was when they are deformed. And in order to do that, we need to go back and we need to measure the, the length of the curves by using a measure node. So if you just tab and write measure, then we need to connect that into here and let's connect this one in here as well. And in the measure parameter, let's put that to parameter and length and let's call the attribute uh, length. And since this attribute is a primitive attribute, as you can see here, primitive attribute, we need to promote it to a point attribute by adding a promote attribute and connecting it in here and in here. And let's select the original class to be primitive and the name to be length. And that will be automatically converted to a point. And if we middle click now, we can see it is a length point attribute. So now if we go back inside this rest uh, set to rest and then we bind in the length bind and then we write length in here we can use that to multiply that by the curve view so if we just add a multiply node and add it in here and then connect that to the length now we get the correct length and the, as you can see they are different in length great let's hop back and we need to make a, a perfect reference to this sweep node. So whatever we change in here, it, it will also change in that sweep node. So to do that, you can right click on it and you can go to actions and then you can create a reference copy. 
this one will have all of the parameters referenced to this one. And we can connect this one in here. And now if we display this one, you can see we have a perfectly sweeped tubes that are in a rest position. This is also storing the P scale attribute, as you can see here, it's like uh, different scales in, on them. Uh, you can see uh, there's a different radius and a different non-uniform scale. This is by default uh, good to have, but we should also have like a, a way to deactivate this if we don't want it. And the easy way to do that is just to delete these two attributes. So if you just drag a line in here and add an attribute delete node, and then connect it in here, here we can remove the P scale and the scale. And as you can see, they are perfectly round now. And then we can add a switch node in here. So we can later when we create an HDA switch between these two, like this. Now we want to save this rest attribute into this main sweep node. And since these two have the same geometry, the, the same settings, and the same point count on the curves, it's a very easy thing to do by adding a rest node, rest position. And you can connect this in here and the second one in here. And right away, if you middle click, you can see we have a rest attribute now. Now, I want to also in the sweep node export another attribute called curve number. If you go into the UV and attributes, and if you go to the attributes tab in here and then activate this last one curve num, which will save the number of each of the tube separately, which can be handy later. I will save another attribute that can be useful later. So if you just drag these down a bit and we add a poly frame node and connect this in here. And if we display this one, we can see the curves and the attribute I want to save is the tangent attribute, which will save the direction vector of each of the curves. So for example, this curve in here will have a vector that goes this way, which can be handy to have later on. So in, in the node, I will deactivate the normal and I will keep the tangent name and just write a T in here, just to keep the name short and then connect it in here. And lastly, I just want to add a, a normal node in here and display it. And we want to change the cusp angle to be a higher number, like 180. So some of these still look round, even though they have like a sharp edge. Now in the sweep node, sweep node, we want to change a few things. I want to have it by default closing the end caps. So if you go to uh, this in here and select single polygon. And as you can see, uh, if you go to the tops of these tubes, now you can see they are closed before it was not. So this is useful. And this is a, a parameter we will expose to the HDA very soon. And also create the, a group for these end caps. The second thing is I'd like to have some twists happening around in the tubes. So right now they are just nicely, if we just display the um, wire frame, as you can see, they are nicely kind of following the curves. I want them to kind of twist around the curves a bit, not too much, but just enough to have some variation in the shape. And there's a, a, a few parameters in here to do that. So we have the these uh, rotation uh, parameters where we can add full twists, as you can see. And we can, uh, we can have like half twists based on angle. So I want to control this in two ways. I want to control it with these two parameters, but I also want to add an attribute that will add some noise to the direction of that. So they are not all following the same twist. So let's, let's do that. Let's put this one to zero and let's add a point op in here, point op. And let's call this one roll, connect it in here. And I'll keep it only on this side, not this side. And let's dive in. And in here, let's bring in the uh, curve view by binding it in, curve view. That will make it so we, we have a twist based on the cur curve view attribute. So in the beginning, it will be less and it will be more at the end. And then we can add a noise to that. So if we just add a, if we drag from the P position here and add a turbulent noise, Let's change this type to sparse convolution. And I'm just going to add a smaller frequency overall. 
but then we will fit that. So if you add a fit node and we'll get the minus values to the plus values. So 0 0.5 to 0 0.5. And I don't want this noise to be overpowering. So let's just make it be from 0 0.8 to one. And then let's multiply that by the curve view attribute. So drag from here and add a multiply and then connect this in here. And then what we need to do is just export this. So bind export to a new attribute called roll. And that will be our noise dop twist. So let's go back up. And in the sweep node, we can, if we go down again in here, we can scale this partial twist by an attribute, scale by attribute in here. And it automatically puts it into a roll attribute. So now when we when we add some of that twist, it will twist them with a bit of, of variation using the noise. Great, let's put this back to zero. And now it's time to create this into an HDA. So let's just select all of these nodes in here and then put them into a subnet like we've done before. And let's call this one sweep with rest. And let's dive inside. One thing I forgot is to promote this curve num attribute to a primitive attribute right now it's a it's a point attribute as you can see in here and we just want to have it in the primitives instead so let's just add a an attribute promote connect it in here and select the attribute in here which is curve num and change the new class to primitive and now if we middle click in here we can see it's a primitive attribute great let's jump back up and now let's save this into an HDA. So right click and create digital asset. And this will have the same default settings that we had we had before on when creating HDAs. But what we need to change in here again is the location of where we save this. And we need this to be in the hip HDA directory. Then create. Cool. The first thing I will do quickly is just to change the icon. So press on this button in here and go to icon and in here. And let's just ser search for sweep and select this sweep node. Apply, and then we can see here we have the sweep icon. Now we need to export a few parameters. So let's just uh, dive inside in here. The first thing I wanna export is whether or not we wanna resample this. So let's just right click on this maximum se segment length and then export parameter and also this length parameter. So export this one. So now we can activate or deactivate this and change the length if we want. Now, the rest of the things are mainly in the sweep node. So if we go in here and go to the surface, we need to export how many columns we need in each of these tubes. So export this one. And we need to export the end cap type in case we want to change that later. And lastly, we want to export these to the, the twisting parameters. So the full twist and the partial twist. And then in here, we need to export this uh, switch node. Let's call this switch use scale and p scale. And let's right click on the select, select input in here and then export this one. The, so this will be our selection, whether we want to use the scale and p scale or not. Great, let's put these into folders. So uh, I'll drag in a folder in here. I'll change this to simple and ch uh, change the name into input, let's say, input curves, input curves, and I will drag the uh, segment length and uh, the toggle and the length into this. Then let's create another group, change this to simple and call this geometry, geometry. And let's add the columns and the end cap in here. And also the whether to use um, P scale or not uh, at the top in here. And let's change this to a toggle. And lastly, let's add another folder called twists. So twists. And let's put the, the twist settings in there. So let's apply this. And if we go up in here, we can see our settings. Oh, and we need to change the name of this uh, select input to use scale and P scale. And then apply. And now we have the settings we need in here. So let's just accept and right click on this, save no type and match current definition. Great, now we have a unified sweeping node that we can use later. For this tree, I will just put this uh, the columns to 40 
and their full twists to four. And that's it. Let's save.